In this segment, we'll take a look at interactions in JGRASP. Briefly, the interactions feature allows us to enter one or more Java statements or expressions and then execute or evaluate them immediately when enter is pressed. When variables are declared and assigned, they appear on the workbench, which in turn allows us to open viewers on the variables. The interactions pane is located in the lower section of the desktop. So let's begin by declaring and assigning several variables. Let's key in int i equals 10. When I press enter, notice the workbench tab pops to the top, and we now have i on the workbench. Let's key in double x equals 10, and press enter. Now we see x on the workbench. Let's key in string s equals hello from jgrasp. And after enter is pressed, we see s on the workbench. So far, we've entered three Java statements, each ended with a semicolon. If we need to revisit one of these statements, we can use the up arrow or down arrow to scroll through them. If we made a mistake or just want to modify the statement, we can edit the statement and then press enter to execute it again. In addition to Java statements, we can also enter expressions. These don't end in semicolons. Let's enter i, and when we press enter, we see i evaluates to 10. Now the same for x. Now let's key in i plus x. And when we press enter, we see the result of adding i and x. Now let's key in s. And we see the value of s is hello from jgrasp. We can also enter an expression with s. s plus again. And we get hello from jgrasp again. Note that evaluating these expressions didn't change any values of the variables. Only assignment does that. Since string s is an object, we can invoke any of the string methods. For example, s.length returns 17, the length of hello from jgrasp. s to uppercase returns hello from jgrasp in all caps. We can also open viewers on any of the items on the workbench. Let's open a viewer on i. We do this by simply dragging i from the workbench and dropping it where we want it to open. The default view for an int is the basic viewer, which just displays its value. However, we can also look at a detail view of i by selecting the detail viewer. Here we see its value in decimal, hex, octal, and binary. The 32-bit binary number is the internal representation of 10 as an int. Now let's open a viewer on x by dragging it from the workbench. When we change to the detail viewer, we see the decimal value plus its internal 64-bit representation in IEEE floating point format. We see its sign, exponent, and mantissa in binary, hex, and decimal. And perhaps more importantly, we can see the actual computation using the decimal values for sign, exponent, and mantissa, which results to the value of 10.0. These are probably more details than we need to see at this time. But the detail views of i and x, both set to 10, do show us the important differences in the internal representations of an int and a double. Now let's look at our string object on the workbench. Notice that its notation is different from that of the primitives i and x. Whereas i and x have values stored in them, indicated by the equal sign, s is a reference variable. So the notation shows s pointing to a string object rather than being equal to it. Notice that the string object has an object number. Each object on the workbench has a unique number, which was assigned when it was created. These object numbers allow us to tell if two reference variables are pointing to the same object or to different objects. Now let's unfold s to see its fields. 
These are probably not very interesting to us at this point. However, when you write your own classes and create instances of them, you'll want to unfold them to see their fields. This basic view of an object is available for all objects on the workbench or in the debug tab. Now let's open a viewer on S. The default viewer for a string is formatted. This means that if S had included tab or new line characters, these would have been properly displayed. Let's change the view to presentation. This shows us the details of the underlying character array, which we see has 17 elements, indexed 0 to 16. In interactions, if we key in s.caret9, we get m as expected. If we assign s to a new string, s equals almost done. When we press enter, both the workbench and the viewer are updated to show the new string object almost done. When your programs get longer and more complex, the viewers will become more and more useful. I think you'll find them especially useful for objects such as arrays, array lists, linked lists, binary trees, and so on. In fact, we'll explore viewers for data structures in a separate video. Now, just to review, in interactions, we can enter Java statements or expressions and have them executed or evaluated when we press Enter. Variables created by interactions are displayed on the workbench. We can open a viewer on any variable on the workbench by dragging and dropping. And although we didn't show this, when running a program in the debugger, the variables in the debug tab can be used in interactions, and viewers can be opened on them. And as you'd expect, the viewers are updated automatically as you step through your program in the debugger. Well, I hope this brief introduction to interactions in JGRASP has been helpful. For additional details, I encourage you to take a look at the tutorials which are available at the JGRASP website. Thanks for joining me.